You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode about entrepreneurship. I want to talk about an issue that's often the source of a lot of confusion, which is limited liability. What is limited liability for? What's it all about? How does it affect you as an entrepreneur? And how should you think about it? So that's what we're going to cover in this episode. And I'd like to start off by talking about my perceptions of limited liability when I started my business. Uh, Before I uh, started my business, I didn't really have a very clear understanding of what limited liability company law was all about. But I did see it as this kind of magical protection that you get when you start a company, like a sort of invisibility cloak out of a Tolkien novel or something. Starting a company would mean that you would create this kind of shield around you where as an entrepreneur, somehow you are protected. And I didn't really question that belief. I just sort of thought that that was the, the, the rules of the game. That was how, you know, business is set up. And, and that's the opportunity that you have to reduce your risk when you become an entrepreneur. And my initial view of what limited liability law and company law was about was uh, completely misguided. Limited liability is, is nothing like that. And the view that I had was also quite confused in terms of what limited liability is for and who it's for. So hopefully what we'll do is to clarify some of those things as I've now come to understand them. So let's make a difference between what the principle behind limited liability is and what the law is in any particular country or in any way that it's enacted. Because the two are very different things, the principle and how this is actually enacted in law. So let's talk about the principle first. So firstly, the principle of limited liability has nothing to do with you as an entrepreneur running a business. Limited liability is not for you. It is for investors. And maybe you are also an investor. You probably will be because uh, if you're not investing your own money, then it's going to be difficult to persuade anybody else to invest. But nonetheless, it's not for you in your role as the business director, if you like. It's for those people who invest in your business. And the basic idea is that those people who invest in the business want to have some control over the business. So in other words, they want to be able to have some say in how the business is going, but they don't want to become actively involved. They want to be passive um, investors. And that means they want to have a limit on the amount of liability they have for money. And that limit is the money that they invest themselves. So I'm sure that you know most of this, but just to run through the basics, typically what the way that that works is that investors will buy a fraction of the ownership of the business, and that is represented in their shares. And the money that they invest in buying those shares goes towards uh, the development of the business. And if the business goes into financial difficulty and gets sued by someone who demands a huge amount of money, or if it um, has loans that need to be repaid and so forth, then the assets of the business can be used to meet the business's obligations. But the investor doesn't have any of their own personal assets at stake. So in other words, nobody can go after them individually for more money than what it is that they actually uh, put into the business in the first place. And that principle is there so that you can invest in a company without being actively involved day to day and making sure that nobody's doing anything wrong and, and uh, you know being an active part of management. You can simply say, okay, well, I'll give you some of my money and I want you to go away and do the best that you can with it and give me a return. 
and I want the opportunity to to come in and uh, and have certain decision making at key intervals, but I don't want to have to deal with this business on a day to day basis. So that's the difference between the investors and the directors or the managers of a business. If you're an entrepreneur, then typically you're you're probably going to be playing both those roles. Um, but the limited liability principle is to allow people to invest. That doesn't mean that if you are running a business and you're making business deals and involved in business relationships, that you should be protected as a business director from the consequences of your actions. Again, I'm just talking about the principle here, not how it actually works in practice. So investors are able to put their own money into the business and have a limit on what is at risk. Whereas if you're actually running the business and making decisions and making deals, then there's no reason for you to have a predefined limit on what your own liability is. In other words, if you do harm and somebody um, is harmed by you and has a just cause to sue you, then why shouldn't they be able to go after you for your own personal money um, if you take out loans as a small business person why shouldn't the person lending you the money expect you personally to underwrite those loans and be responsible for them and what i found very very quickly is that that's the way that things actually work in practice even if you are a limited liability company as an entrepreneur if you want to take out loans you will have to personally underwrite those loans as a director. Um, nobody's going to lend you money and allow you to simply hide behind the cloak or shield of limited liability. And although the law itself you know, works in various ways, in different places and in different times, the principle there is well understood by people actively working in the marketplace, which is they, they're making a business deal with the individual who is running the company, and they expect individuals to take responsibility for their actions. Now, those are the principles. How does it actually work in practice? Well, it's messy, and you'll have to look into the law in your specific country. But in short, the way that limited liability functions is through the legal system, which is controlled by the state, and limited liability is granted as a kind of privilege to companies that apply for that privilege from the state. And it's granted in a peculiar way where companies themselves are given corporate personhood. In other words, companies are treated in the eyes of the law as being the same as a person. So the way that it works in real life is messy and complicated and involves these specific you know, corporate person privileges granted by the state and so forth. And you'll have to read up about it yourself and see how, how, how sort of the specific law works in practice. But what I'm trying to explain in this podcast is what the rationale behind, behind the whole concept of limited liability is. Because without understanding that, I think it's impossible to make sense of the mess that the law is in regard to this. Personally, I'm of the opinion that limited liability should be something that is contractually controlled. I don't think we need this concept of corporate personhood, and I don't think we need uh, specially granted um, privileges of uh, limited liability to individual companies by the, the state. I can't see why it wouldn't be possible for everyone to just contractually agree the level of liability that they have in any business arrangements that they do. And indeed, this is what happens to a certain degree anyway. So for example, when I started my business, I set up uh, standard terms of consulting. And one of those standard terms was to agree with whoever it was uh, who was purchasing my consultancy services that the limit of my liability under any circumstances in this contract would be X and that might have been a hundred thousand pounds or it might be different depending on specific circumstances but the point was this we were agreeing contractually at the start look I'm giving you advice and you can use this advice hopefully to your advantage but 
you're also taking responsibility to do what you want with this consultancy advice. And if it goes horribly wrong, then you can sue me, especially if I've been neg negligent, but we're agreeing that the limit of what this is worth under any circumstances is a hundred thousand pounds and you know so this in this kind of way people do already contractually limit their liability and i don't see why it wouldn't be possible for shareholders also to be contractually limited by liability in their liability so that the people who run the company and the people who work for the company are the active economic agents the directors and managers and even the staff and they go out and make deals and, and deal with people and they have responsibility for their actions but there are contracts um, who that protect the investors in the business to say that they do not take on responsibility for debt now if anybody wasn't happy with that they wouldn't have to they wouldn't have to do business with that company and they could also say, well, I'm only going to do business with you if you waive that and if you sign a new contract saying that your key investors do take responsibility for, for your debts. Uh, that's what happens to uh, startup entrepreneurs. They have limited liability in the law, but they have to underwrite their debts as directors. So I think the whole thing could be a lot simpler and could be uh, undertaken purely on a contractual basis but it's not. It's done through the legal system and it's done through this concept of corporate personhood and all of the strange things that flow from it. So what about if you want to protect yourself? I mean, what if you're worried about getting sued and, you know, losing all of your own personal assets? Well, there are contractual ways of uh, protecting yourself as well. And I mean, that's basically insurance. That's what insurance is for. And despite limited liability, you're probably going to need insurance anyway. Uh, you can have insurance for professional indemnity. So in other words, you can be insured so that if somebody sues you because uh, you've been uh, negligent in your work, then you can be insured against that. And you can have insurance for all kinds of other things that you may need to protect yourself uh, in terms of your employer's liability, your public liability for um, acts that you may do that cause damage and so forth. So there are contractual ways to protect yourself as an entrepreneur and to protect your staff um, that don't involve using a kind of shield of, of limited liability. Again, how all of these things work in law is a completely different matter to what I'm talking about, which is what the principle behind these ideas is. And there are a lot of criticisms out there about the way that uh, limited liability and uh, works and, and the sort of detrimental effects of it. But at root, I think it's important to understand what the principles are, because as an entrepreneur, you're going to have to work within this context. When I started my business, I did actually think I was going to start a limited liability company. And actually, I didn't even have limited liability. The form that my business took was a partnership. And it was a partnership for almost the entire uh, history of the business. Uh, we did transfer the assets into a limited company just before we sold it. And we thought that we'd need to do that uh, in order to be able to actually sell the company. As it turns out, we actually even made things more complicated for ourselves by doing that. And we could have just sold the partnership uh, itself. So... My experience with limited liability uh, was very limited <laughs> and I didn't even use it um, in, in my own business. Um, you will need to look into what makes sense for you in your business. There are many considerations far beyond the sort of principles that I've been talking about to do with tax and to do with the specific law in your area. And of course, you'll need to get advice and do your own due diligence on what the best company structure is for you. But I thought this uh, would be helpful just to talk about what the principles behind this uh, strange concept of limited liability are. So I hope that's helpful to you. Thank you so much for listening and do please tell me if you have any thoughts about this. I'd love to hear your feedback and hear any of your views about limited liability and its role in entrepreneurship.
Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.